All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday, April 2nd Board of Aldermen meeting. We're going to go ahead and call tonight's meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Philly? Here. Alderman Kelly? Here. Alderman Cleave? Here. Alderman Madrigal? Here. Alderman Presley? Here. Alderman Meadows? Here. Alderman Lesh? Here. Administrator Selby? Here. Attorney Jones? Here. Major Locke? Here. Collector Simmons? Here. Public Works Commissioner Bergman? Here. If everybody would please rise and remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to invite Pastor David Lang to the podium to offer this evening's prayer. Thank you very much, Mayor, and appreciate all of y'all and all your service. I know it's election, so hopefully see you guys again. If not, I appreciate everything you've done for our city and all that you guys have been doing. And uh, I, know, I know it's a lot, and uh, it is appreciated. I'm going to read uh, one of the first creeds that is known um, to us uh, about Christianity, and it's about the resurrection. We just celebrated Easter, so Good Friday, Easter. So this is one of the first known creeds that uh, the church would memorize, and it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says, Now I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preached to you. Unless you believed in vain, for I passed on to you as most important what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you came, uh, that you were the sufficient sacrifice, God, that could pay for sin and defeat death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, uh, we just trust in you. We ask you to be with our city and to protect us, God, I'd ask you to be with all of our, our leaders here and just continue to give them wisdom and discernment uh, just to help make laws to, to better us and to better our, our community. Continue to be with our first responders and all those that do just very brave things, God, that many wouldn't. Uh, protect them and keep them safe, Lord. Just be with all our teachers and our school, Lord, and uh, just help us. Help us continue to glorify you in all we do and say. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you very much. All right, do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion. I have a motion by Alderman Kelly. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Alderman Presley. Is there any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, <clears throat> yes ma'am, Mayor. Um, under new business, we've got two resolutions for um, authorizing resolution, uh, authorizing, authorizing, directing the mayor to execute contract for grass cutting services mm -hmm. for two different companies. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering why we have two different ones. I mean, I understand if there was one and make a choice, I get that. But two different ones, it's like we have to vote the first one down to get the second one or I, it's just. Uh, well, after the last couple of weeks, it was <clears throat> very unclear to me. <clears throat> Um, as to which company this board felt they wanted to move forward with mm -hmm. um, after one was approved and then rescinded and then mm -hmm. no decision was made. So therefore, I put both of them on the agenda for a decision to hopefully be made this evening on one or the other. Okay. Is there, is there a recommendation from administration of which one we go with? I, I look at the ordinance, and it's the responsibility of the officer, employer, or agent of the city. <clears throat> Sorry. To review and investigate all bids received and to make a recommendation thereon to the Board of Aldermen regarding award to the lowest responsible bidder for the entire purchase or contract for any part thereof, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Is there a specific recommendation from the administration? One that met all of the lowest or currently meet all the lowest responsible for bidder requirements. And I appreciate that. I, I wasn't really looking for discussion on that until we get to it, but I'm just yep. wondering if there had been a recommendation. So that was... And if there is, then it sounds like there is. So I'll wait until we get to that point. Um, I still, I mean, we'd have to vote no to a resolution to get to the next one. I just, I don't know. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be, but I, I just think it should be directing the mayor to execute a contract for grass cutting services, and then we can decide well, if, on one. I mean, we can always amend the agenda. That's what I'm trying yes, to figure out to if we can one of them do if, that. If, I don't, I'm not even, I think that's 
part of getting to it. I just think that mm -hmm. the agenda should have one line, item, one line item on there and we decide who to go with versus the way it's listed. And that, that's actually the way I prepared the resolution with, with a blank for the name. Okay. And then the contract was the same. But it wasn't possible to give you two versions of the contract with the numbers from each bidder without having separate contracts. So I think that's why it was put together the way it was. It wasn't the way I drafted it, but I can see motion in writing. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it doesn't that someone could make a motion. Or no motions could be made or a motion may not pass. Or could okay. Um, <clears throat> modify the agenda to say I'd like to go with, and that's a, I think the contract is a con preference. Okay, so we could, um, A would then be decision on the company. And B would. And B would be the appropriate resolution that correct. corresponds with that company. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so I have a motion on the floor to amend the new business section of the agenda, where A would be a decision on the company for grass cutting services, and B would be then, um, voting on the appropriate resolution that pertains to that decision being made. Second I'll second that. Okay. Sorry. So I have a motion on the floor from Alderman Cleave and I have a second from Alderman Meadows. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of improving the agenda, the amended agenda, please say aye. aye. Moving on, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting on April 19th, 2024? I would make that motion. <coughs> I have a motion by Alderman Cleave. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Alderman Madrigal. Is there any discussion? There is. I have one change on page four, top of page four. Um, in the, um, where we said the, let's see, the f second complete sentence, if it was, um, a full-time basis, I'm sorry, third one. Mayor Philly suggested designee or in his absence. Alderman Cleve is okay with that. Um, the way it was was designee in his absence, not or in his absence. And I did go back and review the video to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Just need to strike the word or. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, is there any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from the regular mar meeting on March 19th with that one correction, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Do I have a motion? I'll second that. I have a second from Alderman Lesh. Is there any discussion? Um, the um, only the, the minutes that were passed out say the 26th. <coughs> okay, we will get that corrected. Other than that? All good. All right. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from the special meeting on March 25th with the one correction, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. All right. Moving on to public participation cards. I do have two speaker cards this evening. So when I call your name, if you will please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, and you will be given five minutes to speak. The first one is Ms. Joyce Weber. Uh, Mayor? Yes. Can you go first? Sure, absolutely. Okay, then we'll go with Gina. <laughs> Sorry, Braden first. No problem. Thank you. I'm so short. All right. Um, first of all, just as a quick reminder. This is almost exactly our one-year anniversary that we real? first came. Oh, so I'm real quick, name and Gina address Braden, for the record. Yep. 13, 1316 Peachtree Lane, Pacific, Missouri. Perfect, thank you. Yes. And I'm from uh, Pacific TNR Trap Neuter and Return Program. So anyway, um, this is actually almost our first anniversary since we first come to the City of Pacific to offer our services and ask for some assistance for the feral cat problem and just the stray cat problem in Pacific. Um, so the first thing I want to do is thank all of the aldermen that are currently aldermen, because today obviously is a big day for everybody. 
uh, for all of your support and for making the motion to at least get us some kind of financial support to help us get through the breeding season before the main budgets are decided upon. That will help us significantly. Uh, we've made more progress with our paperwork. Uh, we finished our Secretary of State. We're waiting for the IRS name change to come through and then we should be able to get our tax exempt status through the DOR. So I'm pushing it through, but the government doesn't always talk to each other fast. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is give you a really quick update on our stats. You guys already know we already did about 103 cats for within about seven to eight months last year. Um, 50 of those were kittens. Almost all of them were friendly cats, basically abandoned, thrown out of a house, and just left out on the street. There were a few real ferals that we did have to return. Um, but sadly, a lot of those were friendlies. We were able to get them into shelters uh, or get them adopted, but some did have to be returned to their community. Um, but so far this year, basically between February, March, and today, um, I've already impacted 50 cats. So I will have trapped and returned or taken to surgery 24 cats within the last two weeks. I have kittens to pick up next week underneath the trailer. And besides that, we've relocated the colonies that I talked about last time that were threatening to be euthanized. A couple were shot. We couldn't get there in time. There's nothing we can do about that. And nobody's probably going to press charges. But I did the best I could. We're still working on some of those colonies to get them out of there. And we managed to get people to just calm down and just help us a little bit. But that's how serious the situation is now. In the meantime, I've had multiple people contact me about bigger colonies not just five or 10, we're talking about 30 and 40, and they are very frustrated. They will not call animal control because they've already been told that they don't do cats. So I'm asking for your support, continued support, so that we can at least help the city of Pacific. This is my town and we've offered our resources. I do understand that there's a detractor out there who has pitted us against uh, the cop salaries and possibly money that's going to the skate park. That's very unfortunate because our issue is a public safety issue and an animal safety issue. And we'd, we have offered nonprofit services. We're not making any money off of this. And I do it at my own personal risk. I want people to understand this. This is from trapping and dealing with feral cats and even friendly cats. This is no joke. I've been bitten again today. So I'll probably have to go to the doctor. This is what we're trying to prevent in the community. I don't want residents or people caretaking a colony to have to go through this. So the last thing that we need are detractors in the community that could potentially be in uh, positions of leadership that are detracting from what we're trying to do. This is my town. I've lived here for 30 years. My kids screw up here. I'm still here. I'm not leaving. But I know what's happening. And I'm here to help. I have built 20 years worth of relationships in the entire greater St. Louis area with rescues, doctors, urban feed who can get us food. And that is the advantage that Pacific has in utilizing us to do this work. If we don't get Pacific support, we've already been asked by St. Clair, Rolla, Villa Ridge, Eureka, um, as far away as Sullivan, um, and even in St. Louis, I get called repeatedly to see if I can help up there, help with cats. Um, if we have money from them, we'll do it there. So I'm just asking for your continued support. We appreciate what you guys have already done, and I hope that whoever gets elected will continue to support us. So we really do need this help. You guys need the help. Um, it's a problem that was dropped off in 2018, and it's going to take us years to fix, but we're making a lot of progress. I mean, we've done 150 cats on record, <coughs> But between Joyce and I, we've probably done over 200, and we've spent thousands of dollars ourselves just to try to get this done and to help people. And believe me, they are in desperate need. So I just want to ask for continued support to do that. And I would also like to ask the aldermen and whoever might hear things that are going on on Facebook from these detractors, please put down misinformation. Those people have not come to us at all to find out what we're doing or to do research with us. We have the research, we have the numbers, we have the stats, and I have all the contacts and relationships you need to get this done. But I would ask you guys to please stop the misinformation on our behalf if you can. We would really appreciate that. In the meantime, um, if anybody would like to volunteer, I have, to I have 10 cats I'm trapping and I have kittens next week. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, next I have Ms. Joyce Weber. Joyce Weber, 312 North Olive Street. Uh, of course, I work with Gina. Um, we have all, we both have heard that a lot of people are not supporting us, which, like she just said, if it's not supported, we will work elsewhere. It's not a threat. But, you know, it, other places will give us funding. Um, it is a big problem. Uh, the, one of the can uh, to be candidates was at my house dropping off her sign. Stand it, we were standing in the yard talking, and there goes six cats walking by. And she, we just started laughing. Um, you know, and another thing I want to point out is this one particular person who's running for alderman said it was okay to take cats down by the river and get rid of them. So I'm sorry, but that is, that's not right. That's not humane. And if anybody <coughs> outside of Pacific found out that that's what we were doing here, do you guys understand what a stain Pacific would have? Oh, Pacific is killing cats. It's not an accepted practice anymore. And we're just asking we're not asking for that much money. And whatever somebody wants, the skate park's important, the police are important, I understand that. All we want is a measly $1,500 a month, which will start us on getting all these animals out. And it won't be, you know, it is a hazard uh, to other people's pets. Not so much to people. There hasn't been a 40 year, uh, it's been 40 years since there's been a rabies account from a feline. But if a feline gets bit by a raccoon and then a cat bites somebody, guess what? You get an epidemic. So I don't, I don't want you guys to stop supporting us. And we hope it goes through. Is it's definitely needed? It's definitely needed. And I know some of you do support us, but um, it could turn. It could, I already told you the stats before. Uh, let's just say so many female cats. They reproduce five, six times a year. They at least have four to six, four, five, six kittens in a litter, if they're, let's just say if they were all females, they can get pregnant in four months. Four months, and this is gonna happen any minute, any minute now, because it's breeding season. Think about how many cats you're gonna have in there. And we are offering to, we're not off, we don't want a salary. We're doing this out of our heart. We just need support because we were paying for this by ourselves and by a few donations. You know, so it's, we, we can't pay for it ourselves anymore. So again, if you don't want our help and you, you know, don't follow through, then I guess you're gonna have to find somebody else to do it. And we're doing it for free. This one person wanted to do, find out other options. Gina and I have looked at every option. Gina's been in this business for a long time. I personally have just started like two years ago. Um, it's not an easy job. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Matt, <clears throat> may I speak? Yes. So we approved through June, didn't we? $1,500 a month. And I know that the holdup was paperwork. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> is that still, do we have the right paperwork? No, as- um, And you guys are aware of that, right? right? Yeah. Okay, no, no, I'm just making sure that I'm up to speed as it needs to be. Correct. Okay.
Okay. No, that's fine. I just I just want to make sure because my recollection was that we had approved the fifteen hundred dollars a month. It was just a matter of getting paperwork. So. Right. No, I understood. I, I saw it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We will go ahead and move on to new bills. Do I have a sponsor for bill number 5237? I'll sponsor that. I have a sponsor by Alderman Meadows. Madam Clerk, would you please read bill number 5237? An or ordinance providing for a 15 mile per hour speed limit on Candlewick Drive. Are there any questions regarding bill number 5237? Um, did we get the results of the speed analysis from the police department? Yes, sir. Um, we put the self stat out uh, for six days, one hour and 45 minutes. Um, through that study, it shows that the 85th percentile of speed um, is about anywhere between 23 and 27 miles an hour, depending if you're what way you're headed on the street. Um, so that kind of lines up with the current speed limit. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving on to consideration of bills previously introduced. Madam Clerk, would you please read bill number 5235? An ordinance amending the fiscal year 2023-24 budget and wage and salary schedule for appointed officials and employees of the City of Pacific. Do I have a motion to approve bill number 5235? Motion. motion. I have a motion from Alderman Kelly. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Madrigal. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Cleave? Yes. Alderman Madrigal? Yes. Alderman Presley? Yes. Alderman Meadows? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. With a vote of six to zero, the ayes have it, and bill number 5235 will become ordinance 3411. Again, bill number 5235 becomes ordinance 3411. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you please read bill number 5236? An ordinance authorizing execution of a new wastewater service contract with Brush Creek Sewer District. Do I have a motion to approve bill number 5236? Motion. I have a motion by Alderman Presley. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Alderman Madrigal. Is there any discussion? I just want to, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, whatever you're going to say, you may answer my question. <laughs> yes, uh, Robert. So I, just, I just had a question. Uh, on page 11, under Article 2, under the uh, maintenance of the uh, meter and the red line it states that uh, they have 60 days to replace the and upgrade the uh, flow meter so it's pretty well stating and it's always been their meter at that list station 10 like it like it says uh, but when you get back in page 23 and 24 under the uh, section 305 it's, it's stating that the city is to maintain it and calibrate it and then also replace it at the city's cost and I would like to keep that at, at their cost and not the city's cost because that is not our list station. We don't do any maintenance there. We uh, go out and get the reading every day for the billing, but I would prefer to see that language change to where it's not on the city to replace that meter at their lift station. Okay. And what was the first page you said where you it was? Page, page 11, it's under Article 2. It's in the red lines, um, but the... Uh, no later than 60 days as effective day of the contract, the district. I see why it's saying 11, because 10 is on the left. Th that's why I was like, I was like, have, wait, page 11 is yeah, only it's, it's, two it's sentences, but I figured that out now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's under Article 2. Yes, thank uh, which, you. Which really can be struck, too, because the meter just got replaced by the district uh, about two months ago. Mm -hmm. So we really don't need to change the meter again for any reason. So. Okay. Can I make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Brueggemann's recommendation? I can, yes, so really. If I could just give a little, little context. Yep. Um, okay. The red line revisions are mine, based upon comments that we received from the city's engineer uh, and consultant, Jeff Meadows. And uh, I distilled his comments, and that is what resulted in those red revisions. There are a few that were my own as well. So I, I completely agree with what Robert is saying, that the two are seemingly inconsistent if we're going to uh, have the district replace the meter, and then the city would be responsible for the maintenance ongoing. That was that was not the intent. So, uh, Commissioner Boland is here from Franklin County, and the district he, he wears both hats. So, if anyone has questions about 
the district or this agreement, please feel free. He came up before the meeting and indicated he's happy to, to speak with us. The important thing to remember is that this, this grant is a use it or lose it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can see, see it uh, within your power to take action tonight. So I was going to say, if it's okay with you, Alderman Medigold, let's go through some more questions Please. and discussion in yes. case there's other things that may need to be amended mm -hmm. in this before we yeah. end up taking a vote on the amended. I would send my recommendation. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Jones, with what you just said, I mean, are you? I know you said you agree with what Mr. Bergerman said, but you said that uh, the red lines were yours. I mean, so the change that Mr. Bergerman said, you're 100% fine with. You weren't. Yes, I am. Uh, I, I, I think that the, the meter should be replaced, though, as Jeff Meadows suggested, even though it's, it's relatively new, just so that we start with a clean slate. And there's no question, because there's uh, a, a, some concern about readings. Even though we, we read it, we don't mm -hmm. actually maintain anything at Lift Station 10, uh, which is the district's facility. Mr. Bergerman, do you have any idea on a cost to replace that? I mean, is this a high dollar thing or is this a... It's probably not a super cheap meter. Uh, it's a big mag meter, so... Um, but I mean, like I said, it, I mean, I don't think Jeff probably probably didn't realize that that meter is new when he, when he asked that. So, I mean, okay. I really don't see the purpose of changing the meter. It's a new meter. It's got outside dial. I mean, they literally just changed it a couple months ago. So, and we get a reading every day at that station, so... We know, we know exactly where it's going to start off with the new reading and stuff. I mean, I was going to ask, so it's relatively new within the last just two, couple, months. two months. Just a couple months, yeah. Okay. It's, is it capable of logging instantaneous data and storing it for 12 months? As, I'm not 100% sure, but we do that anyway, so I don't know why that would be really necessary. I mean, because we could pull the sheet out of Ray's office and we get a reading every day, okay. seven days a week. So. I mean, it might get missed here or there, but for the most part, we read it seven days a week anyway. So I don't see why I would need that capability. It, it might already have it with it being a newer meter. I don't really know because I didn't buy it. So I don't, but I know it's new enough where it's got the digital gauge right outside the cabinet or anything. So, I mean, personally, I don't see the purpose of the district spending money on a new meter if it's pretty new. But If, if there was a specific purpose on what this one was, I think, I'm not making a motion at this point, but I think we should consider having language that says, if it does not meet these specs, that it be changed out, if it's something that the engineer's adamant about. Yeah, that, that, I think that makes good sense. Because Robert's correct, he probably was not aware of the fact that there are new meters in place, but whether or not it has these capabilities, we, we don't know. Roll. I was going to say we're out. If you'll just state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Todd Boland, 121 Diamond Farms Lane, Villa Ridge, Missouri. Uh, we've been working with this for some time. Um, started back with Steve Roth. So it's really, I mean, if we don't get this passed now, we're going to lose the money, you know, that we got appropriated from the state. So then we're all, both of us are out 2.8 million. So that's, we just need everybody to work together and get this resolved. You know, Bob knows better than, I know he's been working with Mark and Harold, so. Yeah, I think that sounds like so far it's just kind of a couple just small um, but, additions but the timing or the changes to get it to the state that, is very critical right. and if we don't get it there here in the you know this month uh, we'll probably lose our funding yeah and it won't be apply for it again yeah well hopefully tonight they'll we can get this approved sure. with these these minor changes um if everybody's in agreement on them sure and we could, it could still potentially move forward this evening okay so thank All you right. Mayor. thank you do you have any other Questions, so. No revisions on this. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that Mr. Bergerman believes our systems downstream are capable to handle what we're doing here, because especially in light of the recent discussions, so. Yeah, um, so the, uh, I was gonna talk about my report, but 
the uh, Headworks building is actually going online tomorrow. They're going to cut in the pipes and uh, start flowing through the new channels tomorrow. Uh, and then the next step was with the, uh, uh, and then doing all the uh, cooperation and, and doing all the actual startups on Thursday. Uh, the lift station, that's the critical part for the Brush Creek because that's where Brush Creek comes into. Uh, everything's done with the exception of the generator being installed, which that you know, doesn't have to be there for a startup. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, the control panel's there, so pretty much just the automatic transfer switch and, and the electrical is the only thing left to do. So I'm hoping that within two, three weeks that'll be uh, actually up and running as well, within a month hopefully. So that's, that's going to be the critical part is that you know, lift station two being updated, which it's 90% there. So. so with that lift station working, the answer is yes. Yes. We're capable of handling this. Yeah, that's why we spent 4.2 million. No, I know. I'm just, <laughs> I, I agree. So, just want to make sure. Yeah, okay. And the next step is the other phase of this project was the 27-inch uh, the, uh, gravity line from that lift station to Brush Creek Interceptor, you know, up in the Cedars, which that's ongoing with uh, easement acquisition right, right now. So that's probably a little bit down the road, but as of right now, it's moving forward. So. Okay. That was all I had. All right. Is there any other discussion? All right. So we do have a motion on the floor and a second, and we've had some discussion. Um, Attorney Jones, do you think it's best to ha ask for a motion to amend Bill Number Five Two Three Six with those couple of changes noted, or are they um, administratively enough that we don't necessarily need to amend the bill? Now, I don't think you need to amend the bill. It incorporates by reference Exhibit A. So okay. as long as the as long as the bill is passed with Exhibit A in a posture that you're happy with, that should be fine. And what I have in uh, Section 201 is rather than upgrading the flow meter, it's going to be not later than 60 days from the effective date of this contract, the district shall confirm that the flow meter at lift station 10 shall be capable of data logging instantaneous flows. And then over on page 23 and 24 in Section 305, it will be the district's responsibility to perform maintenance on the flow measuring equipment and replace the meter someday in the future if necessary. All right. Sounds good. All right. Is there any other questions? Uh, one, just one more little thing. Yep. So when you put that language in here, could you say if the meter goes out, they have maybe, you know, within 30 days get it replaced? Because I know the last time it went out, it, it took a couple months to get it replaced. Got it. And that kind of screws up the billing for a, yep. I don't think that would be an issue. So is, it, so is there language if the, if the meter's not working? Were we taking an average of the previous 60 days or something? Yeah, that's what we had to do before is we just had to do an average. I mean, it's not the other one, but. But it, does that need to be have, in the agreement, I guess, is where I'm at. But if you have a big rain or something, <laughs> like right. last night, it could affect things. But yeah. you know, I don't know, and I didn't look close enough on oh, I might know if there's already some kind of language in there, you know, for us to change it within a certain amount of time, but, uh, you know, I think it'd be good to say, you know, if it fails this 2% up and down, or if it, if it fails all together, that it would be changed within a 30-day period. Yeah, it, the language is that if it, if it fails to register for any period, the, uh, the amount of wastewater flow during the period shall be deemed to be the amount of wastewater flow delivered in the period immediately prior to the failure, unless the, uh, the city and the district agree on something different. So that's the default okay. language. Perfect. Okay. Layer okay. okay. cover. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Cleave? Yes. Alderman Madrigal? Yes. Alderman Presley? Yes. Alderman Meadows? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. <clears throat> With a vote of the a vote is six to zero, the ayes have it, and bill number five two three six will become ordinance three four one two. Again, bill number five two three six becomes ordinance three four one two. And I will get you a clean version tomorrow. It can be signed. Wonderful. Thank you very much.
All right, moving on, we have no old business, so we'll go ahead and move on to the mayor's report. Um, the first thing I have under my report is for the appointment of Mike Gallagher to Merrimack Valley Museum and Genealogy Society. This was tabled at the three, uh, March, 4th, 25, March 5th, 2024 meeting. So I would like to ask for a motion to untable this appointment. Motion. I have a motion by Alderman Madrigal. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Presley. All those in favor of untabling the appointment? I, I'm sorry. Discussion. Any discussion? <laughs> yes. It's my understanding that there hasn't been any work begun. Is that correct? Um, work on what? Because this is an appointment for an individual to the historical society, not regarding any work. That Our I'm last aware. discussions were along those lines that we were going to get the conclusion of the work done by this person prior to an appointment to this committee. Again, I don't know that there was ever anything officially put into writing. So I, what work are you referring to? Because I know the there was... The work on the sidewalk. Are you referring to yeah. Nottingham Ridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, that's, in my opinion, something completely different than the appointment of this person to a committee. Um, however, yes, that work is still planning to go on. But due to the weather, they have not been able to start it from the understanding that I have. So it's, the intent is still there. They're just waiting for Mother Nature to cooperate to begin and finish the work quickly. Well, I would make the motion that we table this until that work is complete. Well, there is still a motion on the floor to untable it. So we haven't voted oh, on that I'm yet. Sorry. So right You're now it correct. is still tabled. Correct. So the motion is to untable. Okay. Can I add to that, Mayor? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I did talk to Mr. Gallagher today. He does have a contractor lined up to do the work, uh, which, of course, with the rain did uh, affect it. And then uh, he said if not Friday, then next week it should be done. So just to kind of let you know that. Okay. Thank you very much. So about the untabling, I have not been able to get a hold of Mr. Gallagher. Apparently, he hasn't been getting my calls. Um, I did reach out two meetings ago and I encouraged him to come to a meeting so that questions could be asked. Um, I still haven't heard, so I'm, I'm just letting you guys all know I cannot vote yes since I have not spoken to him and I would appreciate it to stay tabled for the time being until I am able to get a hold of him. Okay. All right. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of untabling the appointment of Mike Gallagher to Merrimack Valley Museum and Genealogy Society, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. 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 All right, so I have two ayes with Alderman Madrigal and Alderman Presley, and I have four nays with Alderman Kelly, Alderman Cleave, Alderman Meadows, and Alderman Lesh. Is that correct? Yes. All right, so with a vote of two to four, motion fails. Um, all right, moving on to uh, appointment of Chris Unterstall or Unerstall, I'm sorry, to the Board of Adjustments as an alternate. Uh, do I have a motion to approve this appointment? I make a motion to approve. I have a motion from Alderman Presley. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Madrigal. Is there any discussion? Uh, I have not had time to contact him as we just received this information on Monday. Um, again, okay. if we can get these information at, very quickly as time the packets come out, it would be helpful in reaching out to him, especially in light of the busy Well, Mr. Unerstall is here tonight, if you would like ah, for me to invite perfect. him to the podium. That, that would be excellent. Thank okay. you. Mr. Unerstall, do you mind coming to the podium, <laughs> stating your name and address for the record, please? Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. <laughs> Chris Unerstall, 400 North 7th Street, Pacific. I did say it right the first time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? <laughs> I said I did say it right the first day. Yeah, Unerstall instead of Unerstall. My apologies. All right, does anybody have any questions for? Yes, uh, I, I did have a chance to read your uh, resume on there. And my question for you is just, what is the reason? What's your interest in serving on the Board of Adjustments? Well, um, I was born and raised in this area, went to Pacific High School, been living here for five years now and plan to spend the rest of my life here. And this is something, whenever I saw it in the, uh, the city paper, there was an opening that I thought this would be something that I would be suited for me because I have um, a lot of, of um, experience in construction. I've been doing it my whole life in oh. development. Okay, thank you. Do you so <clears throat> for for a board of adjustment position on this? So, what is your um, what do you look at when you would 
think about an adjustment. Are you um, reviewing ordinance and, and <coughs> zoning and things like that? What, what kind of things are, do you have when you're thinking through if an adjustment is needed or not? Of course, you've got to consider all the rules of the city, but more than anything, I think you have to look at how it affects other citizens, other property owners. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, thank you very much. All right, all those in favor of the appointment of Chris Unterstall to Board of Adjustments, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. All right, before we can uh, go on to the next, I just want to voice a little frustration um, that I have with the appointment of Mr. Gall Mr. Gallagher to the Merrimack Valley Museum and Genealogy Society. Um, I have listened to all your points. I do take them in. However, what is probably the most frustrating for me um, is the fact that when this was first brought forward, um, well, actually two things. Number one, this is about an individual, not a business, um, an individual who has experience and direct connection to our history and genealogy. Um, part of the city. But the other frustrating part was two candidates were brought forward the same night for positions on that uh, potential committee. One, which is one we're still talking about, what, six weeks later, um, has been a bit contentious. The other one passed with no questions asked. I'm not sure if you reached out to that individual or not. Um, her contact information was not provided in the bio, just like Mr. Gallagher's was not, but yet nobody reached out, or at least not directly to me, to get that contact information. So again, it's just a bit frustrating from my standpoint um, for both of those individuals to be appointed, one to have the hiccup, so to speak, and the other to not have any concerns whatsoever. So just wanted to voice that. Madam Mayor, can I speak on that? Yes. So the reason why I am at least hold it up and table, wanting to table it and have it stay tabled, I have reached out to them. I also think that if we are making appointments, I would like for them to be invited to come to the meeting so that we don't have to chase them down in order to get information or these questions asked. So maybe going forward in order to prevent some of these holdups that we've been seeing, if we could encourage these um, appointments to come to the meeting so that we are able to ask these questions and get this done in a timely manner. Just kind of where I'm sitting on it. And I can understand your frustration on it as well. I would also just like to say when it comes time for appointments um, that are brought forward for me for approval, I hope you guys um, take the same steps, provide information, provide you know bios, contact information, and invite those individuals to come to the board meetings as well so I can do my homework also. So. And, uh, Madam Mayor, I was going to say I, <laughs> I do appreciate the statements and the uh, information on them, and, and that was the difference with regard to the two applicants you met, mentioned, the, the one with the librarian experience and all that information that in there was was very much informative. And Mr. Gallagher's needed to follow up the information on his, as I read it, didn't describe fully all, all the aspects and skills that he had, and so I needed to contact him. And so I think as you've been doing, providing those statements is, is helpful, and at the same time, the phone number with him, just in case there's any follow-ups and we can reach out to him and then just getting, to, getting them to us in a timely fashion, and it'll be fine. Thank right. you. So, no problem. So I have one thing, <clears throat> if it's okay. Um, your, your comment about this is, um, one's a company, one's an individual. Um, I agree if someone worked for a company, that's the case. But when your name's on the door and you own the company, I, no, it's not separate to me. If it's separate to everybody else, so be it. I'm, I'm not gonna, um, that, that's my reason for it. I didn't want to get in, I haven't provided any details. I've tried to keep my mouth shut on it. I don't want to drag anyone through the, the dirt on anything that's going on. Um, I don't know Mr. Gallagher personally at all. So as far as I'm concerned, he's a great upstanding citizen. I'm not, not saying anything about that. I know things that, that um, the Gallagher company has done for rodeo and things like that. Um, and I'm very appreciative of that, but there's something that needs to be done that should have been done that hasn't been done. And if he was just an employee of a company, I absolutely agree 100%, I wouldn't look at it, but he is the company. I mean, he owns the company. So 
that's where I am on it. So, and, and I have not reached out to Mr. Gallagher. Um, and and I, I really don't need to. I'm reading his bio and everything. I think he's qualified. And had work been completed, I was ready to say yes. But it's not. And I understand weather gets in the way, and that's fine. That's, to me, that's why um, I said no to keeping it tabled. That's it. All right, moving on to new business. So the, well, you said, with the amended agenda, so the first. Madam Mayor. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to step down from the dais as I intend to um, abstain from this portion. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you, Alderman Presley. All right, so the first item is for a um, decision to be made as to um, which company we uh, would like to enter into a contract with for grass cutting services. So if somebody would like to make a motion for which company they would I'll make like. a motion for CNC. All right. So I have a motion from Alderman Madrigal. Do I have a second? All right, seeing how there's no second, then motion fails. And I guess we will move on unless there's so a I motion would, on the floor if i can say something outside of a motion if okay. not i mean mm -hmm. okay um <clears throat> I, I heard what your opinion was on on cnc i'm looking for administration i know i guess you can be considered administration but i'm really looking to mr selby or whoever else would have gone through the bid process because there's a lot in the bid process that says when you can go with a company that's higher, that's a higher bid. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really wanted to know what administration thinks or, or what the recommendation from the administration is and, and why that recommendation was made, if it's not the low. If it's the low, then to me it's a recommendation based on, on the low bid. So is there, are, are, you, are you different? The, the tr trust is the low bid. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Selby, are you, are you, is your recommendation <coughs> different than trust? And right, I'm, right I'm, now, CNC is cutting the grass mm -hmm. because I had to make a decision really when the decision should have been made several meetings ago. But the, and what I based my decision on was uh, in that procurement procedure, it says that um, preference should be given to a business located in the city or local. So I went by that and I had a business license in hand. So uh, that's, uh, that's why I made my decision. Okay. <clears throat> and um, is, is the ordinance say that it, that it should go to someone in the city? It does say preferred. It does say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it says when possible, when preferred. Mr. Jones, look up the exact language. Um, okay. All right. That's fine. So your CNC is your recommendation. Yeah. And I guess I've been schooled um, in the past, and uh, I have to go back to uh, Commissioner Gass and then Alderman Gass. Mm -hmm. When, uh, and Robert will remember how many times we were told you buy them screws and you buy them parts at Wolf's Hardware because he's in town. Mm -hmm. And so um, even if it was something like screws, anything small like that, uh, even though we know we could have gotten a better deal at Lowe's or Home Depot, we always went with the, the uh, company that was in town. And so... Uh, all these, all the years I worked here at the city, we always made a preference to take care of the businesses that here are, that are here in town, paying the taxes. So, so uh, that when, when it was even and 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 close, we always we always did that. Even uh, uh, when we would put out for bids for, uh, uh, for instance, uh, tractors or. or backhoes, then it was always Franklin County. We, we take, we, we get our tractors here at Franklin, Franklin County. 
uh, it's always local was preferred, and that's just that's what I based it on, and of course the business license, and that's that's why I made my decision. I don't mean you have to make your decision. No, no, I'm 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 just trying. I want to hear yeah. why, yeah. and I want to see if that. <laughs> but tells uh, you me know, anything I, that, and that I, I didn't I've had people know. talk to me about both of these uh, young men, and they they told me that they both do a good, great job. Mm -hmm. They'll both do a good job, and uh, so um, uh, it's it, it you know, it's Board of Aldermen's decision. Okay. All right. I mean, I, I'm, we've got to make a decision. We can't yeah. continue going on here. So. Um, and with that, um, <clears throat> and full disclosure, no matter what decision I make, it's it's going to be ugly. Um, you know, I have CNC as my next door neighbor, and I've um, had um, I, I know um, Dylan's family, so it's uh, it's a lose lose for me. But. Um, I'm going to make a motion to say that we accept <coughs> trust. And the reason I say that is because the difference, it's a 17% difference, $13,076. And I know CNC is in the city. I know CNC donates money to the rodeo and other things. <clears throat> I know CNC can do the job. No question in my mind at all that CNC can do it because they're doing it now and they've been doing it. Um, but at the same rate, that, that fiscal responsibility to me is that trust um, comes in 13,000 less. And if trust doesn't do the job and can't do the job, I'll be the first one to jump up and say, we need to cancel the agreement with them for poor performance. But my motion is to go with trust. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion on the floor from Alderman Cleave and a second from Alderman Meadows. Is there any other discussion? Yes, Mayor, if I may. Yes. First of all, um, I understand Mr. Selby's frustration in the weeks it's taken. However, my frustration is in the months it's taken before it was brought to us. Uh, I don't feel that you can justify saying we're holding up or slowing the process down when we should have probably made agreement months ago on this decision. Uh, so that's just my comment on that. And then I really have to be a good representative of the taxpayer's dollars when we can, can't justify why to spend $13,000 more. And at the last meeting, you led me to believe that trust was not capable, and I did make the motion and supported C&C. They're a good company, they're a local company. You can't, you can't say anything good but good about them. But however, to represent the citizens of Pacific, I have to go where the money saves the tax dollars money. And so we had to back up, and you were not here to finish our meeting to know we backed up. We withdrew CNC, and we did nothing else and gave trust time to come present themselves. I feel confident that they know what we expect of them, and I believe we need to move forward with their contract. So I thank you for your time. Other discussion? Yeah, I'd like to add, too, um, it, we do currently have, do we have the business license from both of these? Um, we do from CNC. I have yet to see one in, cross my desk <coughs> for signature from Trust. For Trust. And we do have the insurance certificate. Yes, I believe you them. received that. So. And there was nothing in the contract that said that they have to have the business license at the time of the award. Correct, just at the time that services are rendered. Right. Now, if there's a good chance that it, it could be here in City Hall. It just, like I said, I, it hasn't crossed my desk yet to sign. So at this point, um, so services could not be rendered until that business license is signed. Right, understood. And that's, okay. and that's a simple application, right? Or is there more to it? It's an application of fee and... Application fee. I believe there's a no tax due letter that has to be produced in order to get the business license. I'm trying to think what other... I think that's it. I know they have applied. It's in processing right now. Okay. So that's why it's not going to her desk yet. Yes. So there are those things that have to accompany it before it can finish being processed. Yeah. Is there any potential problems with any of that, that review? I don't know. A lot would depend, I would assume, since they have to get a no tax due letter from the state that doesn't come from the city. Um, if that's been requested and they've received it, then it's probably just a simple um, administrative processing that's going on right now, if that has not been received, that 
may potentially be um, a situation. I don't know. And, and that, yeah, as you said, that letter is coming from the state. state it, of yes, it comes from the, the state. Yeah. Is, is Mr. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Dylan Myers. Myers. Right. Sorry, is he here? Yes. If you would, could you bring him? Mr. Sure, Mr. Myers, if you'd come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Dylan Myers, 719 Green Ridge Drive, Catawissa. Hello, Mr. Okay. Myers, thank you. Do you know if you have any taxes outstanding with the state or the city? I, I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Uh, and, and I would reiterate the same thing, which is, I believe, uh, I was gonna say, we, we know both these companies. Uh, I, I know also uh, CNC very well. Uh, as, uh, uh, Cody grew up uh, behind me, and I saw those CNC trucks coming out of our neighborhood constantly, and saw his business grow, and saw him move into different facilities. And uh, I can only think this is this is a uh, as far as a bad situation. It's a great one to be in that we're having another another potential young man come up, build his company, and have an opportunity to do that. Uh, and, I, and I think that while it may seem like we have a conflict here, I think it's a great conflict to have. Um, and I do think, again, uh, when it comes down to the capability, we've already heard that testimony that he has the, uh, the equipment to do it. Uh, he'll be able to hire manpower, additional manpower with this contract. And again, the number one thing, it, it is the lowest bid, and that does save our taxpayers a substantial amount of money. And uh, for that reason, that's, that's the direction I'm looking at. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Anything else? Just like to say, I've, I know it's a really tough uh, decision. I've had Cody and his wife out to my place to look at my pool. You know, they're great. Um, I've got no real problems with them in general. It's just, again, the lowest bid. Um, I've heard from multiple people that, you know, Dylan will be able to do the service. He's a hard worker. I've heard glowing recommendations. So it's, again, just the, just the way it works, lowest bid, and I feel like we've got to save the taxpayers some money where we can. So that's where my vo vote is coming from. Mayor, if I may yes. note from my former position here at the city, he will not need a sales tax letter. He's a service, not a taxpayer. Okay. So Thank you. he'd be good to go. And you wouldn't do anything before issuing the contract without his license signed by you. So Cor I think correct. we're comfortable yes. with moving forward. Thank mm -hmm. you. I will say I agree with a lot of the comments that have been made tonight. I do agree that both companies would do a very good job. Um, providing the services to our city. Um, there, there's one thing that I just keep going back to in our ordinance in regards to determining the lowest responsible bidder. Um, you know, like you guys have all said, I do think that saving taxpayers money is very, very crucial. But I also think having businesses that also follow and respect the laws and ordinances of the city is crucial as well, and I say that because number four of section 105.060, and this is a statement I keep going back to, is the previous and existing compliance by the bidder with laws and ordinances of the city. The previous. From what I understand based on statements that have been made at this room the last couple of weeks, trust has been doing business in our city and we know they do not have a business license. So that goes back to the previous compliance or even existing compliance by the bidder. So that is where my reasoning really falls back to for awarding a contract to CNC. So may I, Mayor? Yes. My question would be for Attorney Jones, is the mayor's statement making them ineligible to be a bidder because of her comments? and hit their bid should not even be accepted? I, w I feel like we need your guidance on that. Yeah, I do not read any of those factors as being disqualifying. Uh, they okay. are to be considered. Mm -hmm. In determining the lowest responsible bidder, the officer, employee, or agent of the city shall consider that as well as five other mm -hmm. factors. Well, and I feel like if once we heard they were doing business in the city, Maybe it should be the staff's position, us as the city, to reach out to let them know, because he is a new company. They may not have been aware that they needed the business license. So I don't feel like we should justify 
that as a reason unless the attorney tells us they're disqualified because of that reason. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, I, again, I, I was going to say, was if we, if we were aware of that, would, again, as Alderman Kelly said, were there any efforts made to, to let them know that they were in breach? Or I only became aware of that at the... At the meeting? At the one meeting after we came out of closed session. Uh, re um, referring it, referring it stated. to the statement about already doing work in the Correct. industrial park. Yep. So, I don't know. Uh, can, and as, can, could we bring Mr. Myers back up? Absolutely, Mr. Myers. You do not need to state your name and address again for the record. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Myers, were you aware that you needed a business license? I was not. I, I would have done it, and I, I promise I would have. Okay. Um, like, I, I work in other cities, too, that I, I, I don't have a license, and I, now I'm aware that I have to have one. And, and were you notified by the city or I by any not. other person in the city? Okay. No, I, I found out at the last meeting was when I found out, and the next day I was in trying to submit it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, any other discussion? All right, we have a motion on the floor and a second to award a grass cutting contract or grass cutting services with Trust Lawn and Landscaping that the decision is being made between the two companies. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. I have four ayes, one nay. Any abstentions? I have one for Alderman Presley. Any other abstentions? All right, with a vote of four to one, the ayes have it, and a trust has been the awarded grass cutting <coughs> services company. So now we need, uh, do I have a motion to approve resolution number 2024-09, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a contract for grass cutting services with Trust Lawn and Landscape, LLC. I would make that motion. I have a motion by Alderman Cleave. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Alderman Meadows. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution number 2024-09, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I have one abstention from Alderman Presley. All right, motion carries. Right. Alderman Presley, would you like to return to the dais? Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on, city administrator report. Mr. Selby. Just uh, one thing. Uh, the mayor asked me every Friday, what's going on with the pool? What's going on with the pool? <laughs> and uh, so I got some good news that uh, Dave at uh, Capri Pools has located the uh, filters and the filter uh, enclosures that will fit in our system using uh, the same horsepower pump so we don't have to worry about the, the pipes being over uh, maxed and um, going to replace all of all of the canisters and all of the filters and it looks like that cost to be about 15,000 as opposed to of the original cost we was talking about 60 to 90 mm -hmm. so and it's going to save a lot of time too and he worked uh, with Kyle in uh, Kansas City, and they, uh, they, they found a company that will do it. So uh, he was talking to uh, Chris Fowler today, the Parks Department, getting the exact number that we need, and those will be on their way. So uh, Great news. That's, that's, that's real good news. And then uh, uh, we'll see what the uh, timeline is on uh, getting the bottom uh, uh, patched and and fixed and, and the caulking. But the big thing was gonna be that filter. It, this will go right in there. There's not a lot of work that has to be done. So uh, you can stop asking me on every Friday about the pool. I'll ask you every other Friday. Yeah, so that's all, that's all I've got. So that's, that's real good news and it's a good time to get it. Perfect. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Major Locke, anything for you? Yes, 
I didn't plan this out. I didn't know uh, our department chaplain Lang, uh, David Lang was gonna be here tonight, but I did wanna let the board know how much he assists the police department. Just this week alone, I had a family reach out to me about one of our residents was in a really bad way and it was just a couple little things to get him the treatment that he needed that was blocking it. I contacted Chaplain Lang who helped us out the same day we got that individual into the, the, the treatment he needed and he's doing great. So I just wanted to thank him for all that he does for us. Thank you. You're being thanked, Pastor Lang. <laughs> and that's Perfect. it. All right, thank you very much. Public Works Commissioner, Mr. Bergman. Are we ready to move forward with these? Approvals tonight, based uh, do on. Do you want to approve them tonight, or do you want to wait till after the contract's signed? That's kind of a question for their attorney Jones. Yeah, I. My preference would be to have the signed, executed okay. contract so this from both table. the county and from the city. All right, then Please. we will put this on the May seventh agenda. May seventh. Is that right? No, April. April sixteenth. April sixteenth. We're only in the first part of April, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, my report went out uh, last week, so unless anybody's got any questions, uh, I've kind of already discussed earlier about the lift station and uh, looking projects that's moving forward. Uh, that's all I really got, unless anybody's got anything for me. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Brueggemann? Thank you. All right. Uh, City Attorney, Mr. Jones. I have nothing to report, Your Honor. All right. City Collector. Simmons. Hello. I have reports on uh, real estate and asking for approval okay. on that, the totals. And I do have an updated one for April. All right. Um, I've, but we're okay. going to go with the one in March that we do have on the paper. Okay. It's listed. All right. So um, we're seeking, so based on the March report that was included in our packets, um, we're seeking a motion to approve of the land and lot delinquent list and the Correct. personal delinquent list per RSMO 94.170. Correct. Do I have a motion to approve motion. that land and lot delinquent list? Motion. A motion from Alderman Kelly. Do I have a second? I would second that. I have a second from Alderman Cleave. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the land and lot delinquent list, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Anything else? Are you going to do the personal property separate? You said land and lot, right? Oh, I'm sorry, land, lot, and the personal delinquent list. It was all one. Oh, motion. it's all one. I just didn't finish my complete sentence. Sorry. My apologies. Mayor, if I may. Yes. I'd like to welcome your board. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to many more meetings, nights, and we're here if you need anything from us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on, operations committee. Uh, we have not had a meeting this month. Right. Next meeting to be determined. To be determined, okay. Uh, administrative committee. Um, we did meet actually, <laughs> and we I think through this. Um, sorry, I've been a little busy today. Um, but um, we um, decided on our standard questions that would be asked of each candidate. I think it was seven candidates. I'm winging this guy, so hopefully I'm right. Seven candidates that we're going to interview. Um, our city clerk has already set up those interviews, and we will um, have recordings of those interviews available to all aldermen. Um, but they are confidential, so we'll figure out exactly how to make that happen where you guys can see them. They won't be something we're going to email out or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> we did have one additional candidate, I think, this uh, last week that yes. submitted or, yeah, or Monday, yesterday, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I think it was last week. Last week, for sure. Um, anyway, so we may have a meeting before our, uh, the next one is always the last Monday, which would make it the 29th of April at 5. But um, depending on what happens, um, and, and um, Ms. Barfield did, did um, What's the, the final date of your final interview? Do you know off the top Thursday. of your head? It's Thursday. what? Thursday? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, you're super fast. Okay. So we'll probably have a meeting before then, but right now the next schedule is April 29th. All right. That was good. it. Thank you very much. Planning and zoning. 
Um, so that we're having a meeting next week at seven. I know I always mess that up. Um, what, at this what day next week? Sorry. Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday okay. next week at seven. Um, Thank you. Uh, we will be discussing the cargo containers and the proposed change to the ordinance um, that bars their use in residential and limits their use in commercial, um, as well as the aesthetic, the fencing, and everything that goes along with it. So, um, just if anybody has one or has any questions regarding them, I really urge you to come to the meeting, share your thoughts and opinions. Um, but other than that, that is it. Uh, I. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mayor. I was going to say, I also just want to um, let you know that we received a resignation today mm -hmm. from Mr. Graham okay. from Planning and Zoning Effective Immediately. Gotcha. So Planning and Zoning is now down three spots. And my question was, that's a public hearing, right? The public hearing. The city's given notice for that public hearing. I would have to check with staff. Do we put out public notice? Do you happen to know Ms. Barfield? I am like 90% so, sure. I, I think we did, hearing, yes. But I, I'll need to check, yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Park Board. Um, have not met since last meeting. Um, we will most likely not have a meeting next Monday. Um, it's the eclipse, and I think park board members like to see cool things in the sky. Um, so I think it will be put off until the following month. Okay. Um, park board is now up to seven members, correct? You'll have to tell me. I honestly... Okay, that's what I've got in my I think, notes. I think... Through up um, seven. By, but. Well, there's only six currently sitting, unless I've missed somebody, and I very well may have, so I'll, I may have to get with you, um, Ms. Barfield. To, but I only have six, and then there's seven members, so. I thought there was six. I think that's right. Okay, so there's still a vacancy available on Park Board. I'm just, as I'll we're going through these, it. I'm normal, putting normal that guy, out there. I'm more prepared for that one, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Perfect, thank you. Um, Tourism Commission. The Tourism Commission has not met. All right, and you guys, I believe, are your next regular meeting is next Tuesday. Tuesday? Yep. Okay, um, and while you don't currently have a vacancy on tourism, there is an individual that is waiting to be replaced. So I know there is an individual who is interested um, that Administrator Selby brought forward. Um, I mentioned to the board last meeting uh, Mr. Patel, so um, Mr. Raymer will s step down at any moment because once he's, he's being kind and hanging on until um, there's a replacement. So if you guys, and that is uh, what the committee, the board appoints that one for my approval. So just FYI on that. Uh, do we want uh, Mr. Patel to meet with the Tourism Commission first as a recommendation? I would say that would probably be a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, well, I was going to say, that, again, the process we laid out before, I've got two other names. So uh, if we could follow that process that we laid out before, which is the alderman submit the names and the biographical information to Ms. Barfield, the whole board has it, and then we can move forward with that. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. All right. Um, and I would add that does follow state statute. All right, moving on, Merrimack Valley Historical Society report. Uh, the Merrimack Valley Historical Society did not have a meeting. They canceled it, and I believe they are down one. Yes, they are down one. All right. Moving on to miscellaneous. Do I have a motion to approve pay up number seven from KJU for the lift station project? in the amount of $302,684.09, and change order number one in the amount of $75,689. I would make that motion. I have a motion from Alderman Cleave. I have a second from Alderman Presley. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving pay app number seven from KJU, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. 
Do I have a motion to approve pay request number nine from T. Drury Contracting for the WWTF Headworks project in the amount of $213,377.32? I make that motion. motion. I'll second that motion. I have a motion from Alderman Presley. I have a second from Alderman Cleave. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of approving pay app request number nine from TJ Drury, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. All right, moving on to the reports of the city officials. Madam, or Alderman Kelly. I would like to share information that Mr. Gallagher has reached out to me and he would like me to share his phone number with Mr. Cleve and Ms. Mells. So I have that information here for you both tonight so you can reach out to him at a number that he'll be able to reach back to you and maybe answer your information. And I thank him for his patience. I'm sure he's listening, so thank you. And that is all I have for today. All right. Thank you. Alderman Cleave. Um, other than I'd like to thank everybody who went out and voted today. We'll see what the outcome is, but I uh, appreciate you taking the time to do that. Outside of that, I have nothing, believe it or not. All right. Alderman Mandrigal. Nothing to report. Right. Alderman Presley. Uh, I just reiterate Mr. Cleve's uh, comments about the election today. It was a very cold day <laughs> to be sitting outside, but uh, it was good to uh, chat with the many voters that came out and voted. Uh, to get to know James a little bit more was also another awesome thing. So I uh, just want to thank all the voters for coming out and casting their votes. Thank you. All right, Alderman Meadows. Um, I just want to say, you know, you guys, everyone that ran has run a good race. I wish you guys all the best of luck with the outcome tonight. Uh, went and visited Ward 2's voting station, and I know you guys looked really cold up there, so I do not envy you guys sitting out there today. But other than that, I appreciate everyone coming out to vote today, and I think that's about it for me. All right. Alderman Lesh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um Again, yes, thank to all, all the people that came out and voted. Um, that's that's uh, the uh, privilege and, and right that we all exercise and helps make this uh, uh, municipal government work. Um, the uh, I had three items that I wanted to bring up with the board. I've mentioned them, two of them before. Um, one of them was the purchasing rules, and that goes back to when uh, I believe Mr. Cleve was having some clarification by Mr. Jones. Um, and I would like to make a motion to have Attorney Jones draft a uh, change, an amendment or a change to the current ordinance on the, uh, on the purchasing rules. Um. And if anybody needs any clear refresher, I'm happy to go into it. Yeah, I, if you don't mind, which section currently and what are you looking to change okay. or have updated? <clears throat> The, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, are you possibly pulling it up? My mind is still I am. I think it's. Out. I think it's the city administrator's authority to contract, which yes. is in yes. 105.040, subsection 6, $5,000. And then in the section under city administrator, it's $500. Yeah. So those, we or, need to reconcile those. Well, 500, well, 6 was... Six was saying the ability to contract for five thousand, correct, which would enable the city administrator, without, uh, if I'm correct, without bids or quotes or board approval, if it it's would still have to be a budgeted item, correct. And then that was conflicting with, and that's where I'm forgetting the number. Is it a one that said under a thousand dollars? Those were the same criteria. Under a thousand dollars, without bids or quotes or board approval, the city administrator can spend under a thousand dollars. So that's, you've got a $1,000 amount and a $5,000 amount in conflict. I was looking at section 115.260. It says the city administrator is the purchasing agent and all purchases amounting to less than $500 shall be made under his direction and supervision according to the purchasing rules and procedures approved by the Board of Aldermen. Is there another section that? Yeah, there was, it's, it's under purchase. I'm oh. so sorry. It's under purchasing Oops. rules and there, there were four criteria. There was, um, it was under 1,000 
uh, more than 1,000, less than 10,000, or less than 10,000, I believe, and then 10,000 to 25 and over 25. Was that that six was a six correct? Yes. So it's I think it's a one two three and four were those four conditions. And again, I apologize. I don't have the email in front of me. I was just saying I was looking and I don't have the speci specifics of that email. I have the other one. A1 is the purchase under $1,000. <clears throat> yeah, so A1 is saying <clears throat> that if the amount is under $1,000, um, that, it, again, doesn't specify any quote or bid, which means the, uh, I thought that's what you were interpreting that as, is saying uh, they don't have to have a bid or a quote or board approval, A1. The only thing, only requirement, which is in down there lower, was um, the requirement that it has to be in the budget. Well, a competitive bidding is required for all purchases exceeding $1,000. That's in the statement of policy. I'm not right. Right. So one is saying under one thousand dollars. Right. So under one thousand, city administrator has authority just to go purchase it. Just has to be a budgeted item. No other requirements. Right. That's what A one is saying. There is no requirement that it be budgeted. Mr. Lash, are you talking about A6, the one that was added on May 19th of 2020? Yeah. Where it's talking about the authority to contract. It says that um, the amount of liability to the city not exceeding $5,000 provided such goods and services are within the scope and remaining amount available from an authorized budget line item. I'm yep. not sure if you if that's the one you're thinking conflicts with well, ten thousand or yeah a a six is similar so again when you look at a two three and four they add requirements on there that you have to have bids you have to have quotes mm -hmm. you have to have board approval a one is doesn't have any of those just under a thousand dollars the city administrator has the authority and a six is saying the same thing correct well well a one is not restricted to the city administrator correct it's oh, okay. any officer employee or agent of the city. Okay. And, and six, I assume, is authority to contract, not just like a purchase. Well, it's both contracts and purchases. Okay. Enter into contracts for and make purchases of goods or services. <clears throat> so then what you're saying is A1 says that any city employee can purchase anything under 1000 Whenever any contemplated purchase or contract is for less than a thousand, the officer, employee, or agent of the city may order the items as needed in approved in accordance with the approved accounting system. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then the A six that yeah. says it's the city administrator only that they can do under five thousand get without bids or quotes. And Which was an expansion of the city administrator's okay. Okay. authority at the time. I'm following you on that. So the, uh, what was the conflict you were talking about then? A, it was A6 with 115.260. Yeah, 115.260, which says $500. And that's, it's, a, it's completely different language. I could read them to not be in conflict. I could read them to be in conflict. I thought that was what the one that you were. Yeah, and I'm, I remember the emails we were having, so yeah. I understand that. So, but I mean, do you think, so with what you're seeing, I mean, what recommendation do you have for cleaning that up? Well, I think I would just take out the reference to $500 in the city administrator's powers and just reference uh, 
section 105.040 okay. instead so that it make them consistent. And Mr. Cleve, is that in line with originally back then what you were seeing? I'm, I, I didn't prepare for this, so I can't answer that without taking more time. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, if that's the conflict that you were seeing, Mr. Jones, and I think it needs cleaned up, I think that's that's enough for me yep. to say I make that, again, that motion to have Attorney Jones draft that up. Okay, so the motion on the floor by Alderman Lush is to for the Attorney Jones to review section 115.260 and clean up the necessary language to reference it to section 105.040. Am I correct in that? Yes. All right, so I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Alderman Meadows. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of Attorney Jones cleanup effort, please say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Uh, the second item I had on there was uh, an ordinance on the special meeting. And uh, this one is just as, as we recently went through that, there was some subjective language in there and that's really all this is about. It's, it's subjective and what determines an emergency and, and what standard it's met for there. And so I would say, uh, or my motion would be to draft uh, an amendment to that that just changes it, changes it to the state minimum 24 hours. And again, in that same language, it's in there for Alderman to request a special meeting. And they specify the time with a 24 hour notice. And that's section 110.010B. And it, it currently currently reads um, special meetings. Just so everybody's aware, in case not everybody knows what the ordinance actually says, um, special meetings of the board of aldermen may be called by the mayor or upon written request of four or more members of the board of aldermen. Notice of special meetings of the board of aldermen shall be posted on the public notice board at city hall and delivered in writing to all members of the board of aldermen at least 48 hours before the time of such meeting. So you're looking to have that change to 24 hours, correct? Yeah, and wasn't okay. there, And then there's also such yeah. notice shall include the name and our names of the officials calling such meeting and shall state the nature of the business to be considered. Provided, however, that the Board of Aldermen may, may by majority vote waive the requirement for 48 hours notice in the event of an emergency. Yeah, and, that, and that's the language that was getting really excuse the word wonky because the majority vote, you can't call a majority vote when you're sending an email. So that's what I'm getting at with cleaning that up. So and probably it, just just eliminate that last clause. It, eliminate the last clause and I, again, that, that email I sent you, I think there was maybe one or one other word prior, which okay. was, uh, um, I forget what it was. Uh, the, yeah, I was talking about the, the uh, oh, the language that was in there was saying something about an emergency and then an emergency is not defined. So right. getting rid, that's why I said the state minimum is 24 hours and if we just leave it at that, a lot of that subjectivity goes, goes away. Okay, so we're changing the notification. <clears throat> um, to 24 hours. To 24 hours and then striking the statement that says that the Board of Aldermen may by majority vote waive the requirement for 48 hours notice in the event of emergency. Yeah, so, that, would, that would be it. So since, there's not, since we're changing it from 48 to 24 in the beginning part, we're just basically striking the statement that the Board of Aldermen can waive that requirement right. in the event of emergency. Right. Okay. All right, so I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Alderman Meadows. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of Attorney Jones uh, drafting an amendment to section 110.010, section B, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Uh, and the, the final one is the, uh, the committees. I, I've been mentioning these again. I really strongly believe uh, that, that we uh, can make our committees a little stronger, a little, little more effective, 
and if we separate instead of having one committee reviewing separate topics and it might also uh, reduce some of the load that's going on as we're seeing right now with the administrative committee taking on a big personnel issue you know personnel review uh, and that is to separate our committees create four committees for the alderman of finance personnel uh, public safety and operations and any of the other ones any other ones you guys might have some discussion on so I'll make the motion to draft um, draft an ordinance to, to change our standing committees to, to change our standing committees to to four for uh, four subject matters and those subject matters are to be determined because no, we'll pers personnel finance uh, public safety and public operations okay and then again we have the current structure of three aldermen on a committee I would even entertain you guys discussing two uh, I know there's some cities that do two um, but again same kind of structure we have now but with three uh, aldermen or two aldermen on each of those four committees um, okay so we already have two standing committees by ordinance, so now we're gonna have a total of six standing committees is what you're asking for? No, it would be. Or we're replacing operations yeah. and administrative with? Yeah, because, op op yeah, right. Okay, operations. so we're gonna dissolve operations and administrative and create finance, personnel, personnel, not personal, personnel, public safety and public operations. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure I got that part first. And then you also want to propose having it be two aldermen and the mayor for a total of three as opposed to three no, in the mayor position. I was going to say three aldermen. Three aldermen and no three, mayor three affiliation. Aldermen, no mayor, two aldermen. And that's, that's where that's the motion, and we can start having some discussion on it. Okay. If there's a Hold second. On, I just got, so... <laughs> Currently, there's three aldermen and the mayor, and you're wanting that to be just three aldermen or just two aldermen. I'm making the motion, and then, and then I'm up, like, I'll make the motion and say three, and then we can have the discussion. From okay, there. I just want to, yeah. because if I, Attorney I just, Jones yeah, is going to be working yeah. on this entire section, I um, want to make sure that. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm, he I'm, gets it all I'm at encouraging once. some discussion right now, and, and uh, I was throwing that out already. Okay. So, I just want to make sure I have the motion clear. All right. <clears throat> so, currently in section 110.110, section A, or part A, we have two standing committees, and then there is, <clears throat> with each committee being composed of the mayor and three members of the Board of Aldermen, one from each ward. Um, the mayor shall only vote in a the tie quorum consists of three of the four. Okay, so we're wanting to remove operations committee and administrative committee and instead have four standing committees finance, personnel, public safety, public operations, with each committee being composed of three members of the Board of Aldermen, one from each ward. Okay, that, well, I just want to make sure we get the, yeah. the motion out there first. So we're just saying three yeah, members of three, three aldermen right regardless of ward. Then we can start discussing. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, did you have that motion? I do. Okay. Um, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'd second it for discussion. All right, I have a second for discussion. All right, any discussion? I just want to understand more of... Um, <laughs> Of the operation of them and and so people understand what why we'd be making a change like this so well one of the things currently is that the administration committee you guys are kind of currently doing a personnel thing Can you speak more to oh, mike sorry. sorry you guys are currently doing a personnel thing and it's taking up a lot of your meeting time um and uh we also have budget coming up finance mm -hmm. It's, that's really loading down the administration. The thought there is if we break these committees out separately, it, it wouldn't be you, you three you three sitting on finance and obviously we'll start mixing it up. And so it's allowing the other three to share the load and vice versa when it comes to operations and public safety. You're splitting those apart and some of you are gonna be 
on one of those committees or both, you know. And so it's, it's about splitting the load, really, and making it easier, I think, as far as meetings. I think it'll also decrease the meeting time on any of those given meetings. We may have more, but that's not to say that each alderman's gonna have more. It all depends upon what the item falls to. So standing committees would remain idle unless something was sent to them? I'm just trying to, like right now with the admin, I try to meet every single month. Um, and, and obviously we have nothing to meet about, we won't, but I like to have it scheduled so that we'd have to cancel versus not having it. So are these standing meeting, or these standing committees that are just gonna meet on an as needed basis or? Well, they could work the same way where you schedule them and then you cancel them if there's nothing to meet on. Okay. Yeah. Problem is we have schedules and if there's a possibility of a meeting, we have to etch that time out so that we can make it. We've been excellent, I think, on the three, four scheduled committee meetings. I don't think, I don't think we've missed any. No, no, I, I think. And so, right. and our meetings generally go about what? An hour mm -hmm. at the most? Mm -hmm. And we're able to cover everything. But I, I understand the, what Mr. Lesh is saying You're because. About to get loaded down right, exactly. The budget and finance, the, the budget and finance part's going to hit admin while we're trying to figure out who the new city attorney is too. So, uh, oh. attorney, sorry, admin. city administrator. Um, so, I, I get where Mr. Oh. Lesh is coming from. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'll say, um, also while we're having discussions, something to keep in mind when you have committees, um, whether it be standing or all, you also have to have the staff here to record minutes. Um, we have to make sure that the boardroom is available for those time frames, and also working with everybody else's schedule. Um, you know, and it's not just staff for minutes. If you know law enforcement is needed here, um, we have to make sure that we're staffing that accordingly as well. So while I, I do realize these are ad hoc meetings essentially, um, you know, or committees, the, that could be something just to kind of keep in mind when thinking about this also. Other discussion? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. My uh, comment or question would be public safety, public operations. Could we not combine those into one and just have like three? That way we would have the six of us. There would be two for, t you know, poop for three instead of trying to put someone on a fourth one. It's, can you explain to me why you thought those should be separated? Uh, public works and public op uh, Public safety, pu public operations. Those are two of the responsibility areas under operations right mm -hmm. now. So if you kept them the same, that would be like what we have with the operations. Um, so again, I mean, if you're you're going to be looking at some of us right now, stepping in and helping out with finance, you'd want to try to take something that we've got and, and, and share that load across. Uh, I will say, I don't know that we've had, but I had a conversation with Mr. Locke some time ago that we may be starting some topics on public safety, but we haven't had any yet thus far under operations. The, the special permit is, the special permit process is one of those. Mm -hmm. I will also. I, I was gonna say, it, it's it yeah. really just comes down to the administration committee. You guys really are taking a, the load right now. And and I, I really wanna help out. I think the three of us would be willing to help you out. I also want to say there's the, also the opportunity for workshops. There's, you're talking about finance and budget. Um, there's yeah. nothing that necessarily says, I don't believe, it has to go to administrative committee first. We could just go straight into a budget workshop with everybody and tackle it all together. Or, you know, that the workshops smaller, are always options. Or even a smaller group. Um, I believe it would either have to be a standing committee by ordinance or a workshop, correct? Uh, a, well, a, a group of aldermen that are not. I think you could always have a work session. And mm -hmm. If you expect to have a, a quorum of the board of aldermen, then you need to obviously follow the formalities and right. post it, put the agenda out 24 hours in advance. But I, I, whether it's called a standing committee or a, or a work session for whoever can attend mm -hmm. is, is, is Okay. You have so you're saying a standing committee and a workshop are the same? They, they, they function the same way, right. really, because they're just advisory. In, 
Yeah, and they need public notice. Fact gathering mm -hmm. and advisory, yeah. And they both require the public notice, yeah. But it, it, I'm just thinking if, you know, the three operations, the current three operations committee members got together to talk about the budget, that's one, not enough to constitute a quorum, but it could still be a workshop potentially, even if it's with the three that aren't on the administrative committee. True. As, but it'd have to be a workshop, yeah. not a committee meeting. So would we, so you're saying you'd structure that as an ad hoc, you'd create an ad hoc budget or finance committee under what the mayor can, can create? Good. I mean, is that what you, that's what, what you're thinking or? I mean, a, a, a committee to be created has to have at least four members of it and looking at to carry out administration and conduct of the city's business. Um, that are not specific to the two current standing committees. Oh, so on the ad hoc you're talking about, the mayor's ability to create an ad hoc, it requires a minimum of four? Uh -huh. That's no. what the new language says. Yeah, yeah, at least four members appointed by the mayor and approved by the Board of Aldermen. Is it possible to break the budget up uh, amongst the committees and have uh, transportation and public safety, the, the, those very issues that operations deals with, have them take that part of the budget and then the other parts of the budget would go to administration. Um, of course, the biggest part of the budget is uh, public safety, police department. Yeah, I mean, that's a good idea, but wouldn't that, if one group's working on one part of the budget and then they, the other one's working on then try to bring them two together, is that going to kind of seamlessly come together in, in your experience or? I, I would think you didn't have a workshop of all of the yeah. aldermen to bring it all together to and all to together. talk about it. Yeah, it'd be That's really no different than when we've done a workshop in the past of all six aldermen or a couple workshops, you know, everybody's sitting down together yeah. at one time. I would be happy for operations to take half the budget. You could have revenue and they can have expenses. <clears throat> yeah, we like that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, the other factor into this motion here is the removal of the mayor position, whether it be me or somebody two years from now or four years from now, whatever it may be, um, not being part of a standing committee, but not being a part of a committee. Um, you know, kind of the, the reasoning behind that would be a... a something that I'd be curious to know. Why taking that position out of Just right now, committee. I'm just trying to start the discussion. But well, and I'm, I'm just adding that to my, to my discussion on this so with the, topic. So with the, what Mr. Selby pointed out, what would we need in order to go that route? So it wouldn't be an ad hoc? We need, need to establish that by ordinance or? Or we've already got that in place? We already have that in place. And even <clears throat> these ad hoc committees don't, I don't believe, necessarily have to, and looking at the ordinance, they do not have to be members of the Board of Aldermen, if I'm reading this ordinance that, correctly. That's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, they can be, depending on what the committee is, um, or the commission, but yeah, they don't, so, it doesn't, it's so not that, specific to. So obviously, if it's a, you know, a finance, well, that's going to be so Alderman that, as opposed to that's the part of the ordinance the public. that we created the, the history and the, the uh, park committees under the ad hoc. Correct, section B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would say that we definitely have to have, we're doing the budget and finance, I would want to keep them as aldermen. Mm -hmm. committees so it, the it would be more of that standing committee. Yeah. You guys need more time to think about it, or you want to drop it? You got to. You just got to say something. <laughs> I see. A well, lot of I would drop my second. How about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would like to rescind your second on this motion? Yes. Ma All right. So I now have a motion on the floor. I still have a motion on the floor, but I no longer have a second. Does somebody else want to second it? Oh, I will send the main one so we can have time to think about it. Mm -hmm. 
we need to think okay. about it. I think we really need to get this going. And we got to work on this finance. It's one of the things I think we've been missing uh, for a couple of years is the aldermen need to get involved in this process early. I, yeah. I, I would say we make an agenda item for the next meeting. I mean, I'm, I just need to think through the pros and cons. Yeah, I think Alderman's, uh, Alderman <laughs> Administrator Selby's recommendation is a good one to look at splitting the budget um, because yep. we are coming upon that time of the year, yep. um, splitting the budget between the two standing committees that are in place today. Go ahead and get that process started and then bring them back, bring those two committees together in a workshop setting yep. um, to go through it and probably a couple workshops. And hopefully we're ready to start very soon. Mm -hmm. Yes. I say, and on that note, when will we be seeing that budget, Mr. Selby? Well, we just, uh, this week, Monday, we got the uh, department uh, recommendations in. Good. Thank you. So very, very soon. Good. All right. That's all, right. all I have. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make motion. that motion. I have a motion from Alderman Meadows. Do I have a second? Second from Alderman Madrigal. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.